In this video, you'll witness Sri Lanka's forbidden Muslim food. Is this a whole style of cooking that's going to be extinct? It is. It is oh going to be extinct. But first, let's back up. Last time, we touched down in Sri Lanka's capital city of Colombo oh. to try this country's renowned street food. Mm. Nice, eh? Mm -hmm. Now, we're heading inland to the highland city of Kandy. Here, you'll find folks who belong to Sri Lanka's Muslim Malay community, a community with its own distinctive history, culture, and of course, food. Should we try it out? We usually don't eat it with our hands. I don't know what I'm doing. But life here hasn't always been easy for Muslims. So I heard recently, halal was prohibited, banned. If Muslims don't have a choice, according to the book, what are they supposed to do? Today, I'm on a mission to experience some extreme halal food. He just like hammered the bone until it shattered into 18 pieces. He made it into a choking hazard in a country that's banned halal meat. What do I tell? And it all starts here. I'm very excited this morning because the trains in Sri Lanka are iconic. Iconic is not the word. When you Google Sri Lanka, you'll see the train. Well, wouldn't that be iconic? <laughs> Colombo Fort Station in the heart of Colombo was first built in 1908. It's the oldest, most iconic train station in Sri Lanka. Taking off from here can take you pretty much anywhere you want to go. Trains were installed by the British when the British was ruling us or colonized us and it has never changed. The tracks are the same, also the trains are still the same. It's never changed. Is that a good thing well, or a bad thing? It works. It still works. But we do have newer trains now. The route from Colombo to the highlands of Kandy is one of the most beautiful in this country. But first, give me a tour. We're gonna need snacks. We've got overcooked omelette with bun. Then we have the onion relish called Sini Sambal. That sounds like a vegetarian option. Yes. yes. Onion relish and bread. That's yeah. a sandwich. Spicy onion relish. Oh. These are fish samosas. Fish. I've had every type of animal put into a samosa except for fish. Because we eat a lot of fish. They have a lot of things here. I think we just grab a few things, we sort it out on the train, and we exactly. go. Let's do it. To the mesh. Getting the candy from here entails a three-hour journey. That is, if there aren't any breakdowns or mishaps along the way. But I know there's absolutely nothing that's going to stop this trip from happening. We are on our way right now to Candy. Candy is only about 60 miles away from Colombo, but it takes about three hours to get there because of the winding roads. Yes, roads, not train tracks, because I couldn't get on the train today. There is a fuel shortage in this country and all kinds of trains are being canceled. Right, Ruzena? Yeah. Sri Lanka's economic crisis means importing fuel has become an incredible challenge. For the average citizen, gassing up their car has become an ordeal that could consume hours of waiting in line. As you can see, it's even affected the train schedule. If we wanted to go on the train today, what would we have had to do? Stay in the queue for a very long time, which is like a 50-50 chance as well to buy the ticket. Fantastic. So instead, what we've done is we've chartered a bus. The silver lining is we still have food. Take a look at that. Um, maybe don't take a look at that. This is a thin omelet and then literally nothing else. But in general, I'm gonna put that back and save that for an emergency. A bus crash or something, and I'm very hungry. Here, this is what really captivated me. This is a fish samosa. I'm assuming a lot of people in Sri Lanka eat fish. Fish is the main source of protein and the most respected source of protein. Ooh, fish, highly respected. Hmm, my problem is... I grew up in a place without much seafood, central Minnesota, not exactly a um, maritime destination. So whenever I hear a fish, like fish taco, I think of like wet tilapia. When I hear, you can't even really tell there's fish in here. It's meat, but it's also filled with potato, tons of spices, tons of flavors. That's pretty good. It's a bit cold now, but I still like it. It has cooled down a bit. This right here is another option. This is basically the same filling, but it has a roti on the outside. Did I say that right? It's roti. All right. I thought it had 17 R's. Very satisfying. This is the gas station burrito of Sri Lanka. It's perfect. It's warm, it's spicy, it's full of some stuff where you don't exactly know what it is for sure. And it's just got a really chewy, carby outside. I love it. Right now, we're about one hour away from candy where we're gonna be eating something much more substantial. Rusaina, what are we gonna be eating? Lots and lots of meat. Lots and lots of feet. Meat. Meat, sorry, I can't hear you up here. Lots and lots of meat. Welcome to Candy. I heard this place is famous for its bread. It is. But what is it about the bread? 
Candy Sri Lanka is one of the only cities in entire Sri Lanka that has so many bakeries because of the Dutch and English colonization. But what about Kotu? Kotu is the iconic dish that rules everyone's heart. Chicken Kotu, it's one of this country's most popular street foods. It can be eaten with a variety of meats. But here at Kandian Muslim Hotel, chicken is king. The base comes from Godamba roti, sliced up into tiny pieces. Then a flavor bar. A combination of chopped herbs and vegetables, chili powder and eggs. What I like is that we got the chicken version and I thought he would like shave the meat off, but he just like hammered the bone until it shattered into 18 pieces. He made it into a choking hazard. <laughs> Even the inedible bits add even more to the experience. Have you ever choked on this? No. They brought some gravy here. I'm gonna, I'm, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just gonna smother it. Yeah. All right, let's try it out. This, I like it like this, but sometimes I do like the gravy. Don't choke. <laughs> there are random hard things in here, but is that a bone shard? Oh, it's a bone. Really? Yeah. I love that. I'm gonna get the chicken on the side next time. The best part is that the bread here just soaks it all up immediately. Super flavorful. It reminds me of a curry. Curry. Flavor. Okay, yeah. So we are right now in a Muslim restaurant. Yeah. This country has so many food influences from different people, different countries, different backgrounds. And some of the folks who have influenced Sri Lankan cuisine are the Malay people. Yeah. Sri Lankan Malays first settled in this country in the 13th century. You yourself are Malay? Yes, I am Malay. Even though they make up but 0.2% of this country, they still had an impact on its cuisine. When it comes to New Year, that's the dodol, arsenic. So many of these sweets that are celebrated is Malaysian origin. However, we have to remember that when it comes to food, it's a melting pot of different cultures, and that's what makes our food unique. Sri Lankan Malays are mainly Muslim, but you hardly find Malay restaurants. Why is that? It's a dying community because they are getting married outside of their culture. Slowly and surely, there will be no more Malays. Ruzaina has made it her mission to raise awareness about her culture and other minority food in Sri Lanka. That's not always as easy as just heading to a restaurant. Sometimes, the best recipes are locked in the minds of those who learn them from their parents and grandparents. All right, check it out. Home-cooked Malay food. Welcome to my core memory. Situated in the highlands among thick forests, the city of Kandy is one of the oldest in the country. It's home to a big portion of Sri Lankan Malays, including Ruzaina's aunties. There's only a few people who can actually cook like this. One of them is my grandmother, the other one is this lady here. This is the pitu. You get it in what? India. Oh, <laughs> it'll be extinct here, but not <laughs> elsewhere. No, but not this version will be extinct because this is the Sri Lankan Malay pit too. Oh. So this is where the influence have mixed and, you know, married each other. Here, Malay cuisine means using homemade ingredients, like roasting wheat flour or making coconut milk from scratch before using them both for a dish called pitu. Next, unstick the rice by hand, then mix it with roasted wheat flour and shredded coconut before steaming. Using bamboo connected to a pot of water below, the steaming contraption is set. This looks like I just took it out of a tin can. It's keeping its shape pretty well. You don't eat it like that, but sunny can. I'm adding more layers to the fusion. Right. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I taste the coconut. It's just a little bit salty, and the rice is moist enough to stick together, but not soggy. I'm assuming that's going to mix with the meat. Exactly. This is called kimus chundi. Kimus chundi. This beef is cooked three ways. They dehydrate the beef by boiling it with black pepper, chili powder, and rock salt. After boiling, she cooks it a second time by deep frying it. Finally, she stir fries the beef, along with powerful flavors like garlic powder, chili flakes, and pepper. Lots of aromatics, very fresh tasting. Interesting combination of bold and fresh together. The meat is very bold, tough, chewy, pretty savory. And then there's some really light flavors in there too. Yeah. It's nice. So it's like something like a preserved kind of beef. So we make it and we bottle it. So every time we want some rice and we want something chewy, we just add it into the rice with all the other curries and we eat. And it kind of gives flavor to the food, right? Exactly. I just had literally almost the same thing in Mongolia called shots, except for it was made with horse meat. Ah. Oh. Have you ever had horse? No. Would you be open to it? If it's halal. Are there many horses in Sri Lanka? <laughs> I'm not going to have horse in Sri Lanka. But maybe Mongolia. Yes. My biggest question upon eating Malay food for the first time here in Sri Lanka is why doesn't this look like any Malay food I've had in Malaysia? Sri Lankan cuisine is influenced with each other and they're married with each other when it comes to food. What about this dish? I would say the Sri Lankan Malay national dish. 
This is called babat curry. Babat is the stomach part of it. Right, who cleaned that? Auntie Doreen. Okay, I trust her. To make this dish, Auntie Doreen uses a cow's spleen, then beef intestines, and even tripe. The sliced up offals are seasoned with turmeric powder, coriander powder, chili powder, tamarind, tomatoes, and rock salt. In a pressure cooker, she sizzles some shallots, chilies, curry leaves, and pandan leaves. Layer in even more flavors. Then finally, the organ meats. After just an hour, these awful off cuts become some awesome offals. Okay, if I'm honest, for me, eating stomach and eating intestines, especially of a cow, it's like Russian roulette. Why? So there's a bullet chamber. Yeah. And I don't know if this is going to be super yummy or super gamey. You'd be surprised. I am looking forward to it. Should we try some? Mm -hmm. Let's go for it. I put the gun to my mouth. <laughs> I slowly pull the trigger and... That's what I was mm. waiting for. The spices here are so powerful. It blends very well with the natural flavors of those internal organs. Exactly. Let me try this intestine. Cheers. Mm. Oh, you love it, huh? Slimy, chewy, fatty. very fatty, gelatinous, and just full of flavor. It's like this cow ate a delicious curry, and then we <laughs> ate the cow. Exactly. Wow, perfectly said. Is this a whole style of cooking that's going to be extinct? It is. It is oh going to gosh. be extinct. I know in the past there's been some conflicts with different groups in Sri Lanka. Were the Malay ever among those? Malays are Muslims. So when the Muslims are getting attacked, it's like we are getting attacked. With the mix of backgrounds like the Sinhalese, Tamils, Moors, and Malays, Sri Lanka has a long history of ethnic conflict. Even nowadays, how are Muslims treated differently from anyone else on the island? Only when there is an election close by. Most of the country is Buddhist, who traditionally are against animal slaughter. But 10% are Muslim, and they require a specific slaughtering process. This is the power play of the leadership. It's been working for centuries, and it's still working here, even to this date. The debate about this halal practice has been on and off for years. This year is no exception. Sir, put her there. I'm Fazi. 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 Fazia. I like that too. Farzil is a meat seller, offering halal meat in the Candy Municipal Central Market. Recently, there's been issues with uh, food imports or food shortages. Yeah. Have you been able to stay open every day? No. They're no. closed. Yeah. With the fuel shortage and political chaos, it's really difficult for them. If not, it's scarce. Oh, so this is not a recent thing. This is a, a fluid, continuously changing thing. It depends on the who is coming into place. It's been two months since the election, although Farzil is still suffering a supply shortage. The issue of halal meat has faded for now, at least until the next election. So I heard recently halal was prohibited, banned. The labeling and even separate preparation of halal meats, where the cattle, its throat is slit, the blood is drained. If you can't prepare it the halal way, are you still going to have Muslim customers? No, you can't do that, no? If Muslims don't have a choice, according to the book, what are they supposed to do? Every nationality in Sri Lanka has their own rights according to our regulations, that they really can't completely ban the whole selling of halal meat. This is our rights, actually. That's a right yeah. protected by the government? Yeah, yeah. Candy has one of the highest Muslim populations in the nation, and plenty of Muslim restaurants. But if it's Malay food you're after, I'm told Auntie Doreen is one of the best around. Ruzaina says you are probably the best Malay food cooker she knows in Sri Lanka. Yeah, definitely. No, 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 no. She said, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Doreen is the president of the Candy Malays Association. How did you get that title? The reputation came from my grandma, and she makes that picture every day for the children. So you had that all the time all the growing time. up? Yeah. She occasionally cooks for large groups in her community, and she comes well equipped. Today, she's cooking up the greatest hits of Sri Lankan Malay food. It starts with oxtail. Auntie Doreen's friend, Miss Muna, is here to help. First, fry shallots, curry leaves, garlic paste, ginger paste, tomatoes, and local fresh chilies. Add chili flakes, coriander powder, black pepper, tamarind, and finally, big chopped medallions of oxtail. How long does it take inside the pressure cooker? Normal cooking, it takes two hours. The pressure cooker takes just half an hour. Ladies, terima kasih. This looks incredible. This is definitely home-cooked food, food made with love. Can you point to each thing? I don't even know if I recognize rice. Yes, yes. that's right. But there's something in there we want you to try and then guess what, guess it, what is. it is. There's something hidden inside, like a prize inside a no, box of no, cereal. No, no, the taste. Oh, I thought there was going to be like an action figure inside. <laughs> do you want an action figure? I kind of do now. <laughs> 
This is the feet, vegetables. Where did it go with another surprise in there? Mm. Action figure? No. Yeah. No, 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 no. And then from here, tongue? Tongue, yeah. yeah. That looks very dense. And that's the tail. The tail, right. Oh my yeah. gosh. These are all my favorite offcuts here. Here we have the tail. This kind of soup you will not find anywhere except in a Malay household. Right. Mmm. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so nice. It's so buttery, rich, and just a load of cumin, which I haven't tasted in abundance in many of the dishes yet so far. This is very powerful, very delicious. This soup is so good, especially when the weather is cold and your feelings a little sick, right? Do you have any trouble getting meat in the last few months? Not exactly, no? but when there was no petrol and diesel in the country, there was no transport for them to bring the beef curry from anywhere. From and how long did that last? One or two months. Did you have any backup food? We were okay because we eat all three meals, but the poorer people, they didn't have anything to eat. Right. So our duty was to help them out. And how did you do that? In particular me, I asked them, I called them and then I just say, you come to Kage, this food city or something like that. Incredible. This, I can't get over this. Somebody here. It's just a very thick broth. You'd see all the collagen from the tail is kind of leaked out into it. And there's a great lingering spice that just hangs out in your chest. It makes you feel warm, like taking a shot of whiskey. You should have had a bottle here. <laughs> in every Muslim community, there are people who drink. But our community is open about it. Yeah. You know, we don't hide it. I take liquor. Yeah, I'll take a liquor <laughs> any day of the week. Not that I get drunk, but I just... No, I would. Well... Yeah, I have gotten drunk once or twice. <laughs> what should we try next? <laughs> try shallots, curry leaves, pandan leaves, garlic paste, ginger paste, and pepper. Add glorious beef tongue along with tomatoes and let it steam in the pressure cooker. Oh my gosh, look at that. What you see here is a typical meal that we have. We have very less vegetables. Oh wow. Yeah. All right, let's try it out. You like? Wow. <laughs> That is some of the best tongue I've ever had in my life. You are an amazing cook. What did I tell you? Really, I'm blown away. It is a texture like no other because sometimes the stewed beef, it can get really broken down. It's soft, but it's maintained some of that texture of the tongue. So it's not just completely falling off. It's just right in the middle. Oh, it's so good. When I was a kid, one time my dad bought a cow tongue. I think he was trying to freak me out by, hey, look at this. And I was just like, ew, gross, like a typical kid from Minnesota. I didn't know that that could be delicious. And now it's one of my favorite things. All of these offcuts are things I would not have appreciated when I was younger, and now I really do. For our final dish, fried shallots, pandan leaves, fresh chilies, and curry leaves. Add dill seed, ginger paste, garlic paste, and chili powder before tossing in the cow feet. Super savory, tender, gelatinous, gooey, low sticky. Everything has like the perfect level of spice. It's just humming in my mouth. Keep me warm, but not painful. According to the guest, that yeah. is the way we cook. I cook. I don't think he would like very spicy. Casual racism. <laughs> so I've been micro aggressed. Why is it so important to you to show me Malay food? It's all about um, acceptance. We have given so much to Sri Lanka. From the clothing industry, to the music and dance industry, to the food, they have accepted all that. But every time something goes wrong, we are felt like outsiders. Mm -hmm. So it's important for me to show that this is our culture, this is who we are. We are here to stay, we are Sri Lankans. This is our country. We are Sri Lankans. That's all. One of the things that strikes me about this food is that it's not national food. It's a mixture of different cultures and different backgrounds, and of course, local geography too, local ingredients. At this time, it just sounds like the traditions being preserved by people who still cook the food. Mm -hmm. Have you taught your kids how to cook this? Yes. That's fantastic. I think as long as people are alive to taste it, it'll keep being passed on. Because yeah. why would you not want to preserve this? Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. You would have to be insane. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A piece. This is like a street food dollar store, right? They have all these different pastries, samosas, sandwiches, everything's about a buck. But it fills you up, and you're good to go. Their slogan, it's food. This guy's looking everywhere except for where he's going. You had that thing, that pressure cooking, you had, yeah, it was really hot. So do you say anything special before you eat? We say bismillah. Did I miss it? Did you do it already? Yeah, we say it in our hearts. <laughs> That's whenever I have a miscommunication or my wife didn't understand me, I said, I told you with my heart. Right. <laughs> Boom, guys, that is the end of our second video here in Sri Lanka. I want to say a huge thank you to Ruzena for making this all happen. It's very special and uh, very insightful. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. You can follow Ruzena here on her YouTube channel.
The Minority Taste. Here you can see her fun food adventures in Sri Lanka and beyond. Is it beyond or is it just Sri Lanka? And beyond. And also beyond. <laughs> Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. I thought you were going to say it. Oh, a piece? Oh, I nailed it. All right. <laughs>